Oh, snap. You can't say that on this podcast, bro. <laughs> because <laughs> they're going to attack you and say that, bro. What's up? Hey. Villano. Hey. It's that daily. It's that daily. It's that daily. We are getting a shit. Hey. 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 Yo, this is a gem right here. I'm telling y'all, this is a gem. Asaka is definitely taking over. <laughs> Drop that down a little bit. We're going to go ahead and get started with our latest episode. Today is a very special day, ladies and gentlemen, because we have a special guest here on our podcast. And uh, for what it's worth, it took quite a while to get him here um for whatever reason i have absolutely no idea but we're gonna hope that this uh podcast goes pretty well so without further ado guys i don't really like him but we're just gonna give him an introduction just because it's the nice thing to do okay um with that being said let's go ahead and give it up for my brother-in-law joshua lufa Woo! i need you to clap a little louder for the people in the back Woo! There's no, there's actually no people in the back. Uh, we're here by ourselves, but I, I, mean, I, I, I need your forehead and the forehead. You're, we both know you're not good at jokes, okay, bro? Okay. We both know you're not good at jokes. So <laughs> let's just skip that, all right? Um, so obviously, uh, this is the Wise and Wealthy podcast with your host, Wasi. And today we're going to be getting into some very, some very in interesting topics that a lot of people have. Um, very little understanding of that I think um, there's going to be a lot of experience that Josh is going to be able to give us for us to get into, um, I guess, a better financial situation. What, what, would, what would you say about that? I would say I was brought here against my will. Oh, my God. Blink twice if you need help. Uh, but, yeah, ask the questions. I, I'm going to be all going to be pleasantly right, surprised because this is not scripted. So let's just, we'll, let's just, we'll see what, 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 what you have to offer. All right, cool. So let's just get right into it. Obviously... Um, both of us, we are the um, founders of the Option Snipers University. Let's talk about that a little bit. How did that come about? How did Option Snipers University come about? I feel like, depending on who you ask, the story is different. Why do you feel that way? I feel like everybody has, everybody emphasizes the part they played and sometimes de-emphasizes the part that other people played. So I'll give you an example. Okay. You are... Every, all the members of Option Snipers, you're the one who knew every member individually. I would almost say, every member, almost every member, almost yeah. every member. Yeah, you would say you were probably the focal point of that origination. Yes. Um, but somebody like maybe Uncle Zoom might say, "Well, he had the most expertise in the area." Mm -hmm. So Option Snipers, which he did. Option Snipers was created because of him. Somebody like Wale said he created. And had the best aesthetics for the program, the and the technical side of it. So it was because of him. So I I just feel like everybody had um, a part to play in the creation of Asha Snipers, and you know just humble me. I just came and I took I took. Bro, the stop ride. stop stop all this. Stop all this. Okay, <laughs> stop all this. So just want, let's let's just answer the question then. Okay, so what? How exactly did Asha Snipers come about? What exactly happened for the creation of this university? Right. Obviously you. You gave your uh, soliloquy a bit about, you know, um, the founding members and things like that. So kind of, you know, go go a little bit deeper into that. So I think the most memorable part for me was the Zooms. If you had to say, what was the, where, where did this start? So we would have free Zooms where it started with just friends and family. We would all just trade together. I think it was like, it started off with like five or ten people. And we try to keep the group small, yeah. but then the next week it'll be like 50 people and then 100 people. And it grew to like over 300, 400 people right. on this free Zoom during the pandemic. And I think at that point we, we had a eureka moment like, oh, maybe we should turn this into a business. Maybe we should actually create a system yeah. to help people more regularly. Yeah, it was, I mean, to me, it was an interesting situation because it was basically a snowball effect. The funny thing was our intentions wasn't even to, like, become a business or even 
like be known. We were actually trying to keep the word low. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, we're making so much money on this side. We have no idea what the implications of this may be from the, um, you know, from the FTC or whatever the case may be based on how much money, you know, we were making. I mean, we were, we were just trying to stay low. So instead of people like keeping that, it seemed like they were like, look, we got to just spread this word because this is too good. And I think at the end of the day, you know, while our intentions were, you know, potentially good, you know, it was it was interesting to see the you know the the results of just being able to get actual results and for people to have it be repeatable. I mean, what, what's your what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, it's so funny that you mentioned it being low because I remember there was one time I was going live. I was trading on my computer. I had an iPhone behind me and I was going live, actually showing my trading. And one of my mentors texted me. He actually runs a multi million dollar hedge fund, and he said, uh, "Josh, uh, take down that live." Mm. I said. Why? I'm just showing people what I do. He said, because there could be potentially SEC implications or law implications of you doing that. Right. So for me, I think that scared me. And even when we were doing it on Zoom, it was really supposed to be friends and family. Like, yeah. that was it. And then somebody told somebody, and then somebody else told somebody and it just else. Kept going. And it got to the point of, like, I remember asking one time, I was like, who are you? Because somebody was like, oh, I was teaching something. Was like, oh, I have a question. And I was like, who, who is this? Right. And I was like, wow, it's just crazy how, you know, that whole business or organization grew out of what essentially was a need that people had. Yeah. I mean, but you got to also think about it, too. Like, what helped us as a business when we first started, I think, was the fact of everybody was alone and needed community. And I think that's something that we offered, not just the financial element, obviously, because, you know, people wanted to make money, but we formed a real community. Like people literally were looking forward to hearing our voices, to seeing our content, to getting the next, you know, um, you know, whatever it is we gave out, you know what I'm saying? Whatever content it is, or, you know, let's say we gave out homework or whatever the case is, or a different meeting. People were literally salivating to to get into these things, you know? And, you know, for what it's worth, like, like we initially stated, it was kind of like a secret type of society in a sense, funny enough, <laughs> um, you know, when we started. But, you know, obviously once the word spread, you know, it was, it, it just kind of just grew out of control. Yeah, no, it, it it, it's, it's been a blessing. It's been a ride for sure. Yeah. I think the whole Austin Cypress process in business, um, and even to today, how we're helping students, more than the financial impact, you know, our group as a total have made over $5 million, even $10 million in profits, yeah. is the legacy impact. Right. You know, the knowledge impact, yeah. the mentality impact. You know, just be able to stretch people's imaginations of what's possible and what it means to actually make income or bring money um, or provide for your family. It's it's interesting what hope can do because literally when people saw the example and the testimonials of what people were able to accomplish, it's amazing how that hope was immediately injected to people because it seemed like, you know, people didn't really have any doubts on what w would be you know potentially occurring as a result of you know joining our community right because you know for what it's worth like it sounds crazy to make a thousand dollars in a day right but then when you're actually seeing it and seeing other people do it constantly time after time over again like usually that's there's more information that you need but for whatever it is you know the hope was injected into people right then and there you know and i, I think that's the whole idea of you know trying to get um, people involved is the idea that at the end of the day, if you all, if all you have is just an example, like that's sometimes that's really all you need, honestly. Yeah, no. And, and that's why representation is so important. Big time. Um, representation is so important that the founding farmers went to war for it. Hmm. There was a quote during the, um, revolutionary period in the United States, it was there's no taxation without representation. Right. Right. So people didn't want to be taxed if there weren't people that looked like them, came from a similar background in them, had the same values of them, if those people were not able to have a say in the way the land was created or the way the economy was structured, then they weren't going to pay taxes. That idea of representation is so key that it even spills over into our legal system. Mm -hmm. When you get into court, you're judged by a group of your what? 
peers, peers. right? Again, that word representation. Mm-hmm. So even in the black community, what we fight for a lot is representation. So representation, we talk about it from a social perspective, talk about it from a religious perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, people left Europe and came to America for religious what? Freedoms, Freedom, yeah. right? But a lot of people, we don't talk about it from an economic, financial perspective. Right. That if there's nobody that looks like you at where you want to be, it's hard for you to even believe you can get there. Right. Um, it's, yeah. It would be hard to resonate. Like if, like it's if you haven't seen a plane fly, it would be hard to imagine all those pieces of metal being bound together and carrying human beings and and being in the sky. So at the end of the day, it really does take you know, the um, the effort, you know, to be able to represent a community of people so that we can all be able to elevate, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I think that's one of the most beautiful things I feel um, pertaining to option snipers is the f- idea that we're not only helping people make money, we're also helping people change their I- idea of what it is or what it means to have money and what that looks like, you know what I'm saying? 100%. I remember of a story even early on there was a young lady, I forget her name, um, and she came into the group and she said, uh, thank you, Ash Slappers, you helped me pay, pay for my $60,000 wedding. wedding. Yeah, I right? remember Right, you that. remember that story? I remember that, yeah. Till today, that is something that sticks with me Yeah, I think forever. I remember her name being Dominique or something. Dominique, yeah. Dominique, Dominique. If, you, if you out there, yeah, go ahead Dominique. and comment in the comment section. Yeah, but, Dominique. Yeah, I remember that. And to think that we actually directly had a, hand in that, had yeah. a part to play not only is somebody getting married, but they're going to have kids and they're going to tell yeah. the, their kids the story of, hey, How they were able to find guess what? Wedding. We yeah. actually paid for our wedding in a unique way. Yeah. I met this guy, Josh, and this guy named Wasi, mm-hmm. and they taught me how to make $60,000 and I've only known them for one month. Right. And there's a, there, there's a key in that I want you guys, guys to realize because at that point, Dominique has probably known us for one or two months yeah. in her whole life. Yeah. And people think that the drastic changes in their life come from 10,000 years of work mm. is not necessarily true mm. because one decision can have a catalytic, if that's the right word, oh my Lord. effect on your life. I'll give you an example. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let's stay right there. What word did you just say, bro? Catalytic. Catalytic. Casamistic. Can somebody help this man? A big effect, guys. You know what I'm saying. Hey, yo, Listen, that wine this... is definitely attacking this guy right now. Up, I'm feeling the buzz. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the buzz. Catabolistic? Okay? Catabolistic. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What exactly were you trying to say? Like, repeat big. that whole set. Okay, it can big. have a very huge okay. impact on your life. Okay. I'll give you an example. Okay. If yeah, somebody who's been a goody to shoes their whole life. Yeah. They worked in nine to five. They went to school for four years. Mm. They've been working as a secretary and accountant for 12, 15 years. Yeah. If they go out and accidentally shoot and murder somebody, mm. or even if they did it on purpose, yeah, that one decision will change the, the rest of their life. And and the generation. And their generation. Correct. Completely. Yes. So we all can always imagine how one negative decision can have a generational effect on somebody yeah. but we don't estimate or calculate how one positive decision can, can affect have it, yeah. the same catalytic effect oh my gosh and you know what that's a new word add that to us dictionary it can have you gave us three different chasm- cannibalistics you gave us three chasm- different ones chasmistic cannibalistic <laughs> event whatever event that is that's how it can have no, it's so true though. So that is a fact. It's a fact. No, because think about it. It's probably even even much more exponentially powerful. Because you got to think about it. Like, lack is limited. Lack is limited, and abundance is is eternal. So think about it. Right? If lack is limited, this means what? If you potentially have done a disservice, right? To um. You know, like, or if you if you didn't do well by you know your your generation, let's say, okay, like, the worst that can happen is for your generation to be at zero, right? So, the the inverse of that, right, is that if you do make a great decision for your generation, there's so much abundance that <clears throat> there's so many much more generations that are going to be able to benefit from what you were able to do. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, and. You know what's so funny? I need some water. 
I'm going to say something that's so crucial and so profound. I don't want you guys to miss this. Yeah. We talk about how murder can have a catamalistic effect oh on somebody's gosh, life. Okay. Catamalistic. Now, let's, 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 find, let's figure out how to spell that because that's the title of this I think the word I'm looking episode. for is ca- catamalistic. catamalistic. It's not catamalistic, bro. It's something, right? Can somebody but, help us with this word? Because I'm actually trying to find it in my head, but he's not helping catamalistic. me. Catamalistic. The, 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 no. the definition of the word, word it actually means a life changing life altering event I, okay. I just can't it starts with a c catastrophic catastrophic is a synonym but that's not the word catastrophic is it, actually a negative connotation it's ca- casimistic we will it's get not casimistic bro it's not i'll find it and i'll, I'll comment let's it see what ca- okay yeah can somebody okay. help us we're but, trying to but, give people financial literacy <laughs> we don't even know what we're saying up here catamalistic minimalistic no, but I, <laughs> I don't know what this guy is talking about but i want you guys to understand something i want you to understand. i want you to ask this question for me while see all right as a brother you don't have to put your arm around me okay. though I, I like you so I'll put but i don't like you so i'm asking you not to put it around i thought it was all love on this show okay it's not love on this show so, so well, it might be the act of shooting somebody. Yes. How much time does it take? A split second. So I want you to write this down. Okay. Life changing events take the least amount of time. Right. Okay. What makes the act of murder so life changing is the fact that you're taking a life and all the implications that has with it. Correct. To have life changing success, mm-hmm. you have to be willing to make. Casimistic decisions. Oh my God. And casimistic decisions don't have to take a long time. Okay. Or ca- you, you, do you understand what I'm trying to say, guys? Not the casimistic. Okay. But okay, yeah. instead of casimistic, I'll say life altering decisions yes. don't have to take a long time. Positive. But they have to be momentous in nature. Mm. So, what is an example? Me and you, we invite, we invested in a $155,000 mastermind. Right. We took what most people pay for a house. What most people will have in their four hundred one k after fifty years or a year a year long salary fifty years of saving mm-hmm. and investing we took that and we invested it in one person in a day right in a mentorship in a mentorship right right mm-hmm. that was a casimistic decision oh my god and that casimistic that pains decision pains me to hear that word every single time casimistic decision it's paining me it's really She's hurting life changing decision it's really hurting me. I'm sorry. I don't like bad grammar, guys. I really don't. And granted, you, you, you even I'm, I'm not. I'm not like. I'll I'm, find the word. I don't like right when now. I use bad grammar. So I'm still being consistent here, guys. I don't know what this man is saying. Casimalistic is not right a now. word. Can somebody please help I'll us? I'll find the word for you right now. Don't worry. Oh, I got God. you. Casimalistic, and now you're wasting our time here. You're wasting the people's time. This is these are watch hours. Okay. Somebody's probably w- driving home from work don't, right now. Don't you want to know the and word? And you're wasting their time giving giving us a a, a false uh, a false word. Casimalistic. Spell it. You can't even spell the word you're trying to say. So even such. I'm it. trying to look it up. Okay. Oh my gosh, guys, you cannot make this up. I swear. I think it's called casimistic. Something like that. I'll figure. I'll figure oh it out. Gosh. Okay. He's saying. <laughs> Not Casamigo. Heck no. Casamigo. Heck no. Heck no. <laughs> oh my god. So goodness. I want you guys to understand. Okay, what are we understanding? Tell us. That one act mm-hmm. when magnified, one courageous act when magnified can have a magnified effect on your life. Right. But the time it takes to make that decision is little. Mm. And the problem is we run past those opportunities every, every single day. day. I always say this too. I say, listen, like we have a million seconds every single day to decide and make one decision that, that can change the course of our life. We literally have an opportunity every single second of our day to make that one decision. And we waste these seconds, right? If we're not making these decisions to be able to benefit our financial situation, then we're, we're doing ourselves a disservice. You know what I'm saying? So true. And it reminded me of something that my therapist once said to me that shocked me. And he said, Josh. Oh, okay. So you go to therapy. We got we got we gotta bring we gotta break that down. Black men in therapy. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to us. Shout out to us. I'm also in therapy as well. Keep going, bro. He said, Josh. It's good to know you're healed. Cause now they know that they're talking to two healed black men. <laughs> you know what I'm I don't think healing is a destination, more so a journey. But it is definitely a journey, but I mean you have to first acknowledge that you need healing. You know what I'm saying? Sure. 
True. I mean, we don't have to go down. I a, mean, a, this is a, the reason why I started. This is part of the reason I started therapy in the first place. I'm the reason. I, you how do therapy. I deal with this guy mm. on a day to day basis? Can you imagine seeing this face every day? I'm the one. It's, it's I'm the shock. one that got you into therapy. It's a That's shock crazy. that you have to like overcome. Mm. Um, so. One thing my therapist said to me, he said, Josh. One thing your therapy said to you, your therapist. therapist guys, to I'm going to, listen, I'm going to call him out on these grammatical errors. You guys are going to have to be patient with him and patient with me too, because I'm not going to let these things slide. He has to be able to speak correctly <laughs> on this podcast, okay? By fire or by force. Continue. You see why I needed therapy? Example A. Uh, so uh, one thing he said to me is that, Josh, mm -hmm. you practice a poverty mindset. Mm. When you go to restaurants, break that down. I said, restaurants. And he asked me a question. Yeah. He said, when you go to a restaurant, do you take away water? I said, Wait, what does that mean? No. Do you take like? Away do water? you like? Do you at a restaurant after you finish your meal? Yeah. Do you get a cup of water to go? Oh yeah, no, no. Because why it's free. not? Because it's free. Not only because it's free, it's you, you have a belief. That water is readily available. Because there's, there's abundance. Mm. So mm. the act of actually taking takeaways from restaurants is actually a mindset that's steeped in poverty and lack. Oh, snap. You can't say that on this podcast, bro. <laughs> because <laughs> they're going to attack you who say that, bro. And you know what? I don't get Leftovers listen, this is, is a... What do you say? Leftovers is a poly... Listen... Most of most of the people watching this podcast right now are very hungry people. So when they're going to a restaurant and they're not able to finish their food, knowing that they're about to go home and there may or may not be food in the fridge, even if there is food in the fridge, most of the time they're looking to take their leftovers home, heat, heat them up, and enjoy themselves over again. Okay. But you're saying that this is a poverty mindset. We need to break that down. Keep going, bro. So Keep cooking. Hey, guys, don't shoot me here. And number one, I said what I said. Oh, damn. And the reason I said what I said is this. If you're somebody of affluence, how many times do you go to a five-star restaurant and you see them do a takeaway? Mm, yeah, pretty much never. Never? Why not? Because if they want the food again, they'll probably just come and buy it. Exactly. They'll probably just come and sit down again. They yeah. have an understanding that there's abundance. Yeah. And they can have whatever food they want at whatever time they want. Most people at five-star restaurants, they're going there for the experience. They're really not even going there for the food anyway. Exactly. Right? Because they're not even feeding you for real, for real. Exactly. The food be like this little, okay? And, you know, we have things like Jamaican restaurants where, you know, we go to them and then we get, you know, our, our plantain. And it's like packed. Jamaican place. Yeah. I love my Jamaican because it's packed. First of all, you guys can see my belly, so obviously I like to eat. Oh, Lord. And if you take it, take it away, I'm not saying that's wrong or evil. I just want you to examine the underlying reason behind that. Right. So I'll give you an example. Have you ever eaten so much? That you and you have so much stuff that you're like, I'm never one day anymore. I'm done. I yeah. can get it tomorrow. Yeah, it's because you understand that there's abundance. Mm -hmm. And the thing about when you go to restaurants and you pack food away mm -hmm. is because you have an idea that you will miss out. Yeah, on. it's a it's a it's a la it's a it's a mindset of lack, right? And, and, because exactly. you're not you're not going to take away the water, but you want to take away the food. Exactly. Obviously, you believe that there's more abundance of water than there is an abundance of maybe food for you for whatever reason. Exactly. And if you notice something, the more higher class the restaurant, the less and less food they serve. Yes. And that's why broke people or poor people or people with poor mindsets rarely go to five-star restaurants because they don't have an understanding uh. that the reason they have less food is, number one, you're not even their target audience. Their right. target audience is the rich. Yeah. And the rich understand one thing, that because at a five star restaurant all food is good, yeah, it's about the quality of the experience and the conversation, not the food itself. So they say just, that again. Say that again. This it's about the got quality me. of the experience and the conversations, yeah, and, and the, not food the food itself. itself. Right. Okay, and that's why a lot of times, like when I go to five star restaurants and I order, or I go to very expensive places, I don't even look at the menu. Yeah. I ask one question. Even one of um, our mentors, you know, when we went to dinner with him. What is, what, is his, what is his favorite saying? Surprise us. Surprise us, yeah. Surprise us. Yeah. Because he understands that. It's an that experience. It's an experience and everything is good. It's more about the conversations you're going to have. Right. And the quality of, of the food is going to be excellent anyway. Anyway, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I want you guys to understand that. And I want you to think something. 
And whenever you go to somewhere or experience something that is different than what makes sense for you, I want you to think, why is it this way? Mm -hmm. Especially when it's attached to affluence and being rich. Right. Yeah, those are very important things. I mean, the funny thing about it is usually when people think of the idea of becoming wealthy, they have an idea that um, it's something they have to go and get. But I think what you're explaining is that there's actually a change in mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and so essentially what you're doing is you're saying this is how the rich people behave. This is how the wealthy are behaving in order for me to have... I have to do, but in order for me to do, I have to first be. I have to first be, like, become. Become somebody. Become somebody different, right? And that, I think that happens through, you know, I mean, even the word says, you know, that we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. You know what I'm saying? So if we want to become new people, if we want to have new things that are tangible, it seems as though, you know, there's a there's a change in mindset that, that needs to occur. Yes. And I want you guys to understand something. I want the cameras to zoom in on me. Like, get not too much though, because the drop is too big. of sweat on my forehead. Like, zoom in very carefully to what I'm trying to tell you. You mentioned something that's critical. The scripture that says, Be you transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of your mind. The beginning of that scripture says, Do not conform to the word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Which means this transformation comes through thoughts. Right. Right? So if you want to transform your lifestyle, your your friends, your circle, your circumstances, it first starts with thinking. But guess what? The one study on earth that's undervalued, underthought, underserved, and underutilized is thoughts. There's no class that says, this is how you should think. There's no thinkology one on one. Right, right, right. Right? So it's your job as a free-thinking human being and a person to enroll yourself in Thinkology 101. Mm. And by doing that, you have to get yourself around the greatest minds that you know, that you like, yeah. that you respect. Yeah. You know? What's what's one of the ways that you think is, is e the easiest way, um, or maybe the most impactful way to, to accomplish that, to, to, to get new thoughts? What, what, what would be your ideas on that? Mentorship. Mentorship. Hey, I, I, I don't think you guys understand the value of paying somebody to coach you. Yeah. Because not only are you getting their tactics on what to do and how to do it, you're also in getting, being encountered with their belief systems. Mm -hmm. How do they think about situations? What perspective do they have? And how does that perspective transform into an action that they take? Yeah. So my coach says this, and it's the, the super crucial. He said, the gap between the life you want and the life you have is directly, exactly proportional and equal to the gap between what you don't know and, and what, what you, you know and know. have implemented. Yep. Okay. Okay? So the gap between where you are and where you want to be <coughs> is the same gap is equal to what you don't know and what you know and have taken action on. Mm -hmm. So if that's the exact gap, then your pursuit should be to get that knowledge and to implement that knowledge. Right. The best way to do it is to pay somebody who's done that exact same thing. Been there, done that. And then copy that. Right. I'm going to say something that's key, and I hope you don't mind me talking. Go ahead, bro. And I want you Talk. to answer this, and I want you guys to think. And comment in the, in the chat. What is the first way humans learn? Your God-given learning device. What is it? Got to be imitation. Imitation. Have yeah. you heard me say this before? No. Imitation. When you were born, the only way you knew how to receive information is right. through imitation. imitation. Yeah. You learn how to talk by seeing your parents talk. talk yeah. You learn how to walk by seeing your parents what? Yeah. Walk. Walk. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question for you. At what age did imitation stop being the primary form of learning? <sighs> like four or five, maybe six. Okay. I'll say you're wrong. Okay. And what I'll say is imitation never stopped being your primary form of learning. The problem is you're just unaware of what you're imitating. Mm. Break that down. Break that down. So what exactly are we imitating? Because when I say, so let me, let me, let me, let me speak for myself here. When I say like four or five, what I'm thinking is, okay, the Google Gaga face, you know, say daddy say daddy right i mean i have two young ones and you know they're currently three and two 
And so, like, that's most of what we're doing now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Between my kids and I, I'm, I'm talking to them. They're repeating back what I'm saying. That type of idea. So I'm thinking, okay, well, the when they stop doing that imitation, that's particularly maybe when they can maybe form their own thoughts. You know what I'm saying? But I guess what you're saying is, listen, even if you can form your own thoughts, you're still imitating something. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So break break that down a little bit. It even goes back to that conversation we had about representation. The reason representation is important is that I say you can have something to imitate. Yeah. The the quote, the saying, the philosophy of you are the top, you are the sum of the top five people you surround yourself with. Yeah. That thinking process mechanism derives from imitation. Mm-hmm. The reason that's the case is you're going to imitate what you're around. So Correct. you're automatically going to become the sum of the five people you hang around yourself with. Yeah. What you have to do is elevate who and what you imitate and consciously choose mm. it. That's deep. That's deep because, you know, I, 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 once, I graduated from Howard University. And I remember my freshman year, um, one of the uh, dorm, um, like, deans or whatever, he walked in. And one of the main things I remember taking away from what he was telling us because, you know, we're we're all high school, you know, you know, we just, you know, came out of high school. We just went through prom, did our graduation, whatever. So we're brand new, fresh on campus, college kids. We're just thinking about how we're just going to, you know, tear up the campus and do whatever we want to do. So this guy, he sits us down, like he sits all the men down in our in our dorm hall. So I went, like I said, I, I graduated from Howard University. I, um, I stayed in um, Drew Hall, right? And so Drew Hall is a all-male dorm, okay? So... That if makes if sense. Why, why does that make sense? <laughs> Continue. <laughs> bro. Don't make me stop this recording, bro. And start it's, beating on you. Continue. Anywho. So he walks in and he says, you know, hey, guys, listen, this is the deal. If you want to be successful here at this university, you have to know one thing. That the f- f- closest five people around you... That's going to, if you take the five people around you, you total up you guys' GPAs and you average them out, that's going to be your GPA. And it was amazing to me because when I heard that, especially at being like having a math background, I'm thinking, okay, I want to challenge that. So throughout the whole course of my freshman year, I'm thinking about the like the five guys that are around me. And these are pretty much just the guys on my floor. And so I'm thinking to myself, like, yo, at the end of the semester, I want to I want to make sure I want to see if he's right. I want to see if he's right. Do you know that after we averaged, it was five, it was five of us. After we averaged everybody's um everybody's GPAs, it literally was my GPA. And I thought to myself, like, wow, like when that happened to me back back then, that was about almost 10 years ago now. What you just said just now, as far as like like people being around you, the the five the like you being an average of the five people around you, yes. specifically pertains to obviously we're talking about mindset now. We were talking about GPA with my analogy here, but obviously with 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 mindset that always stood very very like that's that's True. that's a strong thought in my in my life. You know what I'm saying? Because I always believe like because of just that happening. Anytime I thought about five people being around me, it's like, okay, I'm going to be the average of these people. So I always thought about, like you said, leveling up your 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 um, your mindset, you know, through community. So you you keep going on with that. Yeah. So people really understand that imitation. Yeah. Is something that they do whether they realize it or not. Yeah. Because your body and your mind and your eyes are always looking for what it wants to become. Mm-hmm. Even there's a scripture that says this. It says that us beholding in the glass um, are being transformed from glory to glory. Yeah. The transformation process comes through what? Imitation. Yeah. From observation and imitation. Mm. So you have to, we have to make sure that what we're observing is is the result we want. There's actually a corporate stat out there um, that says that if you put somebody in a company within seven feet of the top performer that they're going to increase their performance by 15%. That's crazy. And another note, if you put that same person within seven feet of the worst performers, their performance is going to decrease by 30%. Wow. So So the bad apple definitely is going to spoil the bunch, essentially. Not only that, you are having 
double the negative impact yeah. from being around the wrong, wrong person, person than, the, right than the, the positive impact of being around the right person. Right. It's better for you to be alone than to be around the wrong people. That's crazy. Especially considering the effects of loneliness. Exactly. It's actually That's better crazy. to be alone. Yeah. Than to, like, it's like, it's like, is it better to hang out with burglars and murderers or to be lonely in your house? Which well, one is, yeah, I mean. Which one is better for yeah, your life? that makes sense. You, yeah. see what you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And from financial, I'm going to say this statement to shock you. I want you to pay attention and, and zoom this and, and this take this within. This dude loves to zoom in for some reason. I your, have no idea Your soul and your spirit. Okay, let's take it in our soul and our spirit. Four-figure problems disappear next to five-figure income earners. Mm. So if we keep going up, we're saying the same thing. Yep. Five-figure problems disappear next to six-figure six figure earners. earners. Right. Seven-figure problems disappear. Six-figure problems disappear next to seven. Seven-figure problems disappear next to eight-figure owners. And let's take it for a practical example. Yeah. When you were younger. And you had a job. I used to work at UPS. Mm -hmm. I used to make $150 a week. Oh After a whole week of working, I was getting paid $8.50 an hour. I was loading up trucks. After a whole week of working, I would make $150. Yeah. So how much do you think I valued the $150? Very heavily. Very heavily, yeah. I mean, but if got. I got around somebody who's making five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars a month. A lot of us spend $150 in a day on eating out and we don't even in realize a second, it. Yeah. In a second, we don't even realize it. Yeah. So if somebody who's making $150 an hour got around me, their problems would naturally disappear. Correct. Why? Because then they get to become engaged in eight, seven, nine, six figure activities. Yes. So a lot of us we don't realize that our solution is not in what to do but in who's doing what we're looking for. Yeah. Who's doing what we want to do. Who's mm -hmm. doing or who has the income we want to have. Right. And the scripture said it like this. It's so, it's so critical. Somebody read it for me, I believe, in Amplified Version. Okay. It's a parable of the talents. Now, I'll wrap it up here. It said that somebody came, and there's a parable, and then they gave somebody five talents, somebody what? Two, Two. talents, somebody, and somebody one. one. And the language in this version of the Bible says this, the person with five talents invested it and made five more. Yep. The person with two talents went to work, work. and earned two more talents. Yeah. And the person with one talent put it in the ground. Put it in the ground and saved it. Yep. The person with two talents doubled their money. Mm -hmm. The person with five talents also doubled their money. But the activity involved was different. It was different, yeah. The person with five talents operated on a different level of understanding and leverage yeah. than the person with two talents. Yeah. But guess what? Got the same result. They right. doubled their money. Right. So the more income you want to make, what needs to change is not your effort, mm. but your leverage. Mm. And your mindset. And your mindset. Yep. Okay? And leverage changes with mindset. You need to understand what leverage you have. Yeah, because the person with two could have invested in the very same thing the person with five made, and the person with two would have made five. Yeah, do you, do you, do you guys are, are you guys getting the picture? Yep. So it's important, and that's what coaching does. Coaching elevates. I'll give you an example. the The coach I paid one hundred fifty five thousand dollars to his mentorship. He's the first person I've ever heard say to me, "You can make a million dollars a day." Mm -hmm. True or false? Literally, yeah. He's the first person he I ever He changed say, yeah. my leverage. He changed yeah. my perspective on money. I used to be like, okay, how do I make a million dollars a year? How do I make a million dollars a month? How do a million dollars a, a day? day? Is yeah. that even possible? Yeah. And I knew abstractly it was possible, but somebody not only saying it, but doing it and promising tangible. and coaching it, it made tangible, it tangible with people who've also done it, including himself. Not yeah. only one million dollar, five million dollars in a day, ten million dollars in a day. $20 million in a day. I was like, how is that even possible? It's out there. And you're only charging me $155,000 to learn that? Right. <laughs> where's the where's my checkbook? Let me <laughs> sign that up. Yeah. And guess what? The person with a seven-figure solution charged a six-figure entry fee. Yeah. At that point, I was making maybe multiple six figures a year, $150, maybe $250K a year. Mm -hmm. He pretty much wanted me to invest... My whole year's salary, yeah, in a mentorship where I probably got to see him for a total of eight days. Crazy, and but what I think the blessing in that honestly is the fact that what people usually think about when they think about investing is letting letting something go, 
But what they don't think about usually is the idea of how you begin to change as an individual based on your investment. Because think about it. You drop 155 grand, right? We we did that together. When you think about doing that type of situation, the first thought is, okay, how am I going to get this back? <laughs> Facts. Okay? Now, if you've only worked towards only getting $1,000 back, then the work ethic that you're going to use is only going to be $1,000 worth of a work ethic. But as a result of us putting 155 grand down, we put ourselves to work. And a lot of what we learned throughout that process is obviously worth tons more than 155 grand. And obviously we've made much more than that since then. But really the, the key emphasis here regarding the situation is as a result of putting forth that sort of investment, we then had to dig very deep in ourselves and start to require new things within ourselves, new levels of um, growth, new levels of diligence, new levels of patience, of understanding, of, of um, perseverance. I mean, we had to see the finish line before we can tangibly see it. You know what I'm saying? But you don't really, you're, you're not able to stretch your mindset that well outside of being able to you know, do that type of situation. So it really just depends on the the level of leverage that you're looking to, or the level of growth you're looking to attain. And and that's something key. You said the level of growth. The, yeah. the the issue with a lot of people is that your dreams are too small. That part. Like your dream might be, oh, I want to make ten k a month or twenty k a month. That k a month. Even if, if your dream is to make anything less than ten thousand dollars a month, your dreams are too small. Yeah. And. Crazy. That in itself is what's keeping you from getting that goal. And you know what? You want to know why it's too small? The reason is. Go ahead. You can break it down. The reason is, the smaller your promise, the smaller your goal, the more options you have. Mm -hmm. The more options you have, the more distractions you get. Bigger goals and bigger dreams eliminates opportunities. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example. If you know that somebody you love needed an operation and you needed to make $150,000 in one month, are you going to go and start selling cars? Probably not. That's not going to make you $150K in a month. Maybe mm -hmm. it could, but likely it's not. Nah. Are you going to go um, put one car on Turo? It's a cool business, but it's not going to make you $150,000 a month. It eliminates broke people opportunities yeah. and forces you to focus on high leveraged intense activities that's going to bring you the most return mm. for your time and your resources. Yeah. And the reason why you are where you are a lot of the times is that you're focused on broke people opportunities. That's crazy. That's crazy that you say that. And we could go into it. Entirely different rabbit hole with that. So like I can like yeah. ten hours I can spend. <laughs> that can go because I, I have I have very controversial statements regarding the idea of people being very comfortable in what they're earning. You know what I'm saying? The whole idea of 100k, you know, as a yearly salary as being a goal. I have very controversial thoughts about that. But we're gonna say that for another episode. One thing I want to know, Josh, is this right? Obviously. You know, people who watch this video, obviously, they may be incited to take action, right? Because what we talked about, you know, it's it's impossible, at least for me, to think that we could just overload ourselves with all of this information and literally have no, um, have have nothing to take away from it from the standpoint of actionable items, right? What's something that somebody can do right now after they've watched this video to say, I have taken action to get into a space where I am changing my mindset? What's something somebody can do right now, today, in order to do that? Obviously, we have things that we got going on, right? Um, but, you know, wh whatever you want to share, go ahead and share it with the people. So, I mentioned something in the podcast, knowledge. Mm. The, the acquisition, the gathering, and implementation of knowledge. But yeah. here's the key. You need the right knowledge. Mm. So, what you need to do is create a habit of paying people smarter and more successful than you. Yeah to receive that information. Right. Okay. Of course, we have five-day challenges and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube channels, things of that nature as well. Well, so, some people might be watching this video and may not even know what the what our five-day challenge is. Just talk about it real briefly so that so that people can have that understanding. So we have a five-day challenge where we teach you how to trade and you know create five figures of income every single month, yep. learning how to trade options, things of that nature. And here's the thing. If you can trade options, you can trade crypto, you can trade 
Forex, you can trade anything. Futures. Okay? Futures. A chart is a chart is a chart. But when we promise that you can make five figures a month, it's because we know you can really make five figures in a day. Yeah. That's just being very conservative. We have many students who make 10, 12, 13, 15 thousand dollars a day. You know, students who I have somebody who's made fifty two thousand dollars in a day, mm -hmm. right? Twenty five thousand dollars in a day. So it's about getting that knowledge. And number two, proximity. Mm -hmm. Okay? Remember, imitation is key, right? So you need to increase your proximity to success. So make new friends. Definitely. Right? Invest in mentorship. That's funny you say that because obviously, like like you mentioned, we have our five-figure our five figure chain challenge. I, and I think we're actually having one in a couple of weeks, actually. So if you're looking to do both of those things, which is one, obviously get new access to new information, and two, also the proximity element, right? Meeting new and like-minded individuals that, I mean, the five-figure trading challenge pretty much, you know, um, you know, kills two birds with one stone, if, if that's the case. So if you're looking to do that, um, we should have a link below. Uh, I think our VIP currently, our VIP ticket for admission is $197, about $200 or something like that for spending five days with us live on Zoom from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern um, we have a lot of fun, obviously. So, um, you have any any anything else you want to share on that? I think I think you covered it. I think you That's covered it. it. I That's think it. you you hit the nail on the head. I hit the nail on the head. Um, how can they follow you? Learn more about you. Personally? So, um, you can follow us on Instagram at Option Snipers University. Josh is on Instagram. Josh at Josh Cashflow, right? I'm, why am I plugging you, bro? You're supposed to plug yourself. <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram at wasi.akin. You can also find me on TikTok. The same thing, wasi.akin, W-A-S-I dot A-K-I-N. Um, we have a lot of fun, and we just we like sharing information and, and doing that type of stuff. So, yeah, Josh yeah. Cashflow, J-O-S-H, Cash, C-A-S-H. I think they know how to spell it, bro. Listen, I've, had, I've said that, and people will clearly come to me and say, how do you spell that? So never make assumptions. So that's that's my Facebook, my Instagram, my YouTube channel, the whole, my Twitter, my TikTok, my, my um, what's the active social network? Active social network is The probably... African one, the Nigerian social media. Probably WhatsApp. WhatsApp, yeah. yeah I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> African social media, WhatsApp. That hey, is yo, like the social media. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yo, yeah. they be sending, what, what's those messages? If you don't send this to 10 people right now, oh they're gosh. going to strike thunder. Like, bro, like, it's okay. You don't have to share the message every time. It's okay. Keep, oh the, keep your thunder to yourself. Uh -uh. And you'll be having random aunties and uncles just messaging That's you. That's where my aunties and uncles find me. On WhatsApp, but I was Bro, like, "How did you?" See I don't even WhatsApp? have shame again. My own is just to block them. Period. <laughs> You're you have no business messaging me. Somebody I haven't even spoken to for how many different years. Oh my god! And and here's the thing: I'm not even too sure if they're even my auntie or my uncle Seth. It's really they'll they'll, they'll just be to, the one to tell me that they're my aunt. You know those type of things. You don't even know the person. They say, "Oh, I'm your uncle. I'm your uncle." Auntie. I I'm your uncle. You, okay. Ha -ha. No, I'm not with this guy. Okay. Listen, the one I'll say my own. Calls. Listen, I know my aunties. I know my uncles. <laughs> they know me. In fact, we've done things together. We've 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 gone gone to our family reunions, done different um you know gone to different family events things things like that. If I don't know you, please do not message me on WhatsApp asking me to share message, or else there's thunder <laughs> that will fire. Please. Oh my goodness. I don't like those type of messages. Don't message me any type of message like that, bro. You want to just leave them with a, a quote or something? What, what do you want to do? Are we are we ending here? Is that it? You want me to leave them with a quote? Here's a here's a quote. Okay. That I think will be um. Additive to okay. this. Okay. Matter of fact, let me give you a story. That right. quote will make sense. Let's zoom in here. So there was a boat that goes from Africa to America. Mm -hmm. It's a seven day journey. Yeah. Okay. And of course, America being the land of the, the rich. But the thing is that the ticket to this boat was so expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was pretty much five years' salary for this guy. Yeah. But he asked friends and family, uncles, aunts, and saved money, and he was able to afford a ticket in the basement of the boat mm -hmm. to America, where he potentially had a job or opportunity waiting for him. Yeah. And with the last $3 left in his pocket, he bought some Ritz crackers and some cheese. Mm -hmm. So long story short, we're on this boat. 
on Monday, he came up, he heard music noise, he came up to the deck, and then he saw people in tuxedos, nice dresses, and a well-laid-out table of different types of lobsters, caviar, whatever the case may be. Yeah. And he was sad. Mm -hmm. And because he was sad, he went down to the basement, and guess what? He had his crackers and his cheese. Right. Because that's all the money he had left. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, same thing. There was steak. There was ribeye. And he was sad because he loved steak. Yeah. But again, he only had enough money for the ticket, so uh -huh. he had his crackers and his cheese, and he ate that. And this went on for several more days. And on Friday was spaghetti night. Okay, his son loves spaghetti. Again, people dressed to the tea, live band, everything. And he retreated to the basement to eat his crackers and cheese. Yeah. On Sunday, they landed on the dock of Miami, and they were getting off the boat. And the man was coming off last, and a, a, a young man asked him, he said, hey, I saw you on the deck all week long. Why didn't you ever come and join us? And the man said to him, like, hey, John, I'm sorry. I only had enough ticket to, enough money to afford the ticket uh. and not to pay for the extra meals. Uh. And John, with tears almost coming down his eyes, looked at this man and said, really? Did you not know that the meals in the party was including the price of admission? Wow. See, a lot of times in life, we pay a price, but because of our mindset, we rob ourselves of the extra benefits. Mm. Same thing with salvation. Yes, salvation got our sins healed, but it also came with a promise of healing, a promise of wealth, a promise of health, a promise of happiness and relationships. But we throw out all those benefits and we just grab on to salvation. Mm. And a lot of you are robbing yourself of the opportunity of the lifetime because you're okay with just the original benefit of the package purchase. Mm. So what you need to do is become a master at absorbing all the benefits promised to you mm. with the package you pur you purchased. Nice. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's very, very deep, bro. I mean, I might shed a tear if I didn't know how silly of a person you are in real life. <laughs> See why I need therapy, guys? So I gotta be dropping such life changing information. And that was really has good. jokes. Nah, I mean I'm sure we're all impact impacted by it. You know, that was okay. a really great story. You see, we I, definitely... need I need to call my therapist right now. <laughs> Send him a text. Like see, anyway, emergency uh, session. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'll see you again. Oh my gosh. Anywho guys, listen, it was great for you guys to spend time with us. Um go ahead and like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you have all the YouTube -y buttons somewhere um, down here, below, up here, somewhere. You'll find it somewhere. Okay, guys? Um, if you want um, more content from us, maybe specific topics that you want, you would want us to cover, go ahead and comment below. Um, if you want to add to the conversation, make sure you do that as well. Comment below. Like, subscribe. Like, subscribe. Like, subscribe, and share. All right, guys? So with that being said, we will see you soon. And peace.